Australia's acquisition of the Naval Strike Missile, developed by Norway's Kongsberg Defence and Aerospace, represents a transformative step in enhancing the Royal Australian Navy's operational capabilities. Announced in April 2022 as a replacement for the aging RGM-84 Harpoon Block II missiles, the NSM acquisition aligns with the 2023 Defense Strategic Review's emphasis on long-range strike capabilities and rapid modernization to address escalating security challenges in the Indo-Pacific. The procurement process for the NSM reflects Australia's urgency to bolster its naval arsenal. Formalized in January 2023 with an initial $125 million Australian dollars contract under the $16 to $21 billion Guided Weapons and Explosive Ordnance Enterprise Plan, the acquisition was fast-tracked to replace the Harpoon systems on the RAND's Anzac-class frigates and Hobart-class destroyers. In August 2024, the Australian government deepened its commitment by signing a partnership agreement with Kongsberg Defence Australia to manufacture and service NSMs at a new facility in Newcastle, New South Wales, located at the Astra Aerolab Business Park. This $850 million investment, set to commence production in 2027, will also produce the Joint Strike Missile for the Royal Australian Air Force, marking a significant stride towards sovereign defence manufacturing. A key milestone was achieved on December 10, 2024, when Kongsberg announced the successful firing of a blast test vehicle from the first Australian-manufactured NSM launcher at Port Wakefield, South Australia. Assembled at Mawson Lakes with entirely Australian-sourced components, this test under Project SEA 1300 Phase 1 validated the launcher's operational readiness, underscoring Australia's growing industrial capacity. Delivery of the NSM has progressed steadily, with initial shipments arriving in mid-2024 for integration and testing. The phased approach targets full operational capability by 2027 to 2028, beginning with the Hobart-class destroyers, HMAS Hobart, Brisbane, and Sydney, and extending to the upgraded Anzac-class frigates by 2026. The RAN demonstrated the missile's readiness during the 2024 Rim of the Pacific exercise, a critical step in operational validation. Local production from 2027 will further ensure a sustainable supply chain, reducing reliance on imports and enabling rapid replenishment. Deployment integrates the NSM into the fleet via modular launchers, requiring minimal retrofitting, with live-fire exercises in early 2025, confirming compatibility with upgraded Aegis Baseline 9 combat systems on the destroyers and SEA 1442 enhancements on the frigates. Future platforms such as the Hunter-class frigates expected from 2031 may also adopt the NSM, expanding its operational footprint. The NSM's role within the RAN is multifaceted, enhancing both offensive and defensive maritime operations. With a range exceeding 185 kilometers, potentially up to, up to 250 kilometers with upgrades, a 125 kilograms high explosive warhead, and an imaging infrared seeker paired with GPS INS navigation, the missile excels in precision strikes against naval and select land targets. Its stealth design, featuring a low radar cross-section, reduced infrared signature, and sea-skimming flight profile, enhances survivability against modern air defenses, while its autonomous targeting capabilities allow it to operate effectively in contested environments. This versatility positions the, the NSM as a cornerstone of Australia's maritime strike capability, complementing longer-range systems like the Tomahawk cruise missile and bolstering the RAN's ability to deny sea control, protect trade routes, and project power across the Indo-Pacific. The implications for Australia's operational capabilities are significant. The NSM doubles the RAN's anti-ship engagement range compared to the Harpoon's 124 kilometers, markedly improving lethality and deterrence against regional threats, such as China's expanding naval presence in the South China Sea and Coral Sea. This aligns with Australia's AUKUS commitments and enhances interoperability with allies like the United States which also employs Kongsberg systems. The missile's dual-role capacity strengthens operational flexibility, 
supporting missions from sea control to amphibious operations under the ADF's Force 2030 framework. Moreover, local manufacturing fosters self-reliance, mitigating global supply chain risks, and positioning Australia as a potential exporter, thereby amplifying its strategic influence. However, challenges persist. High costs strain defense budgets, integration complexities may delay FOC, and the enhanced capability could escalate regional tensions if perceived as an offensive posture. Comparing the NSM to regional competitors' systems highlights its competitive edge. China's YJ-18, deployed on Type 052D destroyers and Type 055 cruisers, boasts a longer range, up to 540 kilometers, and supersonic terminal speed, posing a formidable threat. However, its larger radar signature and reliance on active radar guidance may render it more vulnerable to countermeasures compared to the NSM's stealth and passive seeker technology. India's BrahMos missile, used by its Navy, offers supersonic speed, Mach 2.8, and a 290 km range, outpacing the NSM in velocity but lacking its low observable design, potentially reducing survivability against advanced defenses. Japan's Type 12 missile, with a 200 km range and upgrades planned to 900 km, shares the NSM's precision but trails in stealth features. The NSM's balance of range, survivability, and autonomy gives Australia an advantage in contested littoral environments, though it cedes raw range and speed to some peers. Overall, the NSM acquisition elevates Australia's naval prowess, offering a sophisticated, survivable, and versatile weapon that enhances deterrence and operational reach. While it does not match the extreme range or speed of some regional systems, its stealth and precision provide a qualitative edge, particularly in defensive and coalition operations. Coupled with sovereign production, the NSM positions Australia as a resilient maritime power capable of countering threats and contributing to regional stability. Despite cost and integration hurdles, its strategic benefits outweigh the risks, solidifying the RAN's role in an increasingly volatile Indo-Pacific.